The eastern bluebird is a very common and enjoyable native songbird throughout most of Oklahoma. Creating a bluebird trail is a very fulfilling and enjoyable pastime. I'd like to share some tips for creation of your own bluebird trail. Bluebirds nest from about mid-February through about late July or early August of each year. The male of the species during breeding season is very bright blue from head to tail with brightly colored chestnut sides and chest and a white belly. The female mimics that color pattern but is much more drab as a form of camouflage. The male will start to scout out areas in January through February and vigorously defend those areas by singing and attacking other males in the area. Once a pair bond is formed, the female will build a uh, fine grass woven nest in about a five to seven day period. After she's constructed the nest, she'll lay one egg per day for a period of two to up to seven days. So there are two to seven eggs per nest with four being average. The time of incubation can range from about 11 to 17 days to the time of hatching. Sometimes there's a day in between the hatching of each of the eggs and then sometimes they're synchronized such that you'll have four eggs hatch in a single day. After the eggs are hatched, both the male and female participate in feeding the young clutch and they'll feed them for anywhere from 17 to 21 days, after which they'll fledge from the box. Both parents then participate in feeding the young for several weeks after they leave the box. Here we have a standardized eastern bluebird box for north central Oklahoma. And you see an inch and a half diameter hole in the box. I've chosen as a predator guard here hardware cloth and there's also a latching system to keep the box from opening accidentally. And I encourage a double latching system. I'm gonna pull the pin on the latches here so that even if one of these pins came out, the door is still secured by another pin. So we pull the second pin, and remember you have to account for your wire predator guard if you're gonna use one. You wanna be able to easily check the box, mount it at a height that's convenient for you or your children to check, so that you can check it on the order of every three to four days. Now once we know that a box is being used, we want to approach it very carefully. The females lay the eggs in the morning, so we never want to flush them off the nest when they might be egg laying. So when you suspect that egg laying is going to be occurring, you want to visit in the afternoons. Also, we don't want to visit too late in the afternoon or evening because if you flush the bird right before darkness, it might not return that night and the eggs would possibly get too cold and die. So those are some tips regarding when you should uh, check the box. When approaching the box, when you suspect egg laying or the female to be in or near, you want to make some noise to let them know that you're in the area so you don't accidentally open the box and absolutely startle them. When you mount your boxes on a bluebird trail, and a trail consists of two or more boxes, make sure that you have at least 100 yards between each of the nest boxes. That way you'll reduce the chance of males fighting over the same territory. You'll again want to check the boxes on the order of every three to four days. After a clutch has fledged uh, from the nest, you'll want to remove the nest and clean it completely out. You may notice a lot of bird mites in there, that's okay, because removal uh, of the old nest helps to decrease the time for which those mites are in there. I also like a few uh, flowers of organic sulfur placed in the box as a mite deterrent, and I use that uh, upon the cleaning of every box. So with these tips, uh, you can help make this wonderful Oklahoma cavity nester a nice home and encourage it uh, to bring some beauty and a peace of mind to your area. Let's next talk about construction of bluebird boxes. The basic cavity for floor pan needs to be approximately 4 by 4 inches or greater in size, with a depth of cavity of 8 up to 11 inches. The birds aren't particularly uh, choosy within those specifications. In terms of materials, you're going to be putting some effort into construction of the box, so we'd like to choose a material that's going to be around for several years. The least expensive materials are those that unfortunately will break down the most quickly. 
I do want to specify though that we stay away from pressure treated lumber which uh, can fight the effect of bacteria and fungi but might in fact be toxic to the birds. Here we see an example of pressure treated pine. We want to avoid using this material at all costs. However, these are standard six foot planks, dog-eared planks that are used for privacy fences. They actually come in at $2 or under per plank. So these would require several years of weathering before they would be safe for the birds to use. What I prefer to use is Western Red Cedar. And it's still affordable, and the most widely affordable are those Western Red Cedar planks that are used in privacy fence uh, construction. So these actually have a measurement of about three quarters of an inch thick by five and a half inches wide, but their uh, specifications say one inch by six inches, but you're gonna lose a half inch in width of board and also a quarter inch uh, in the thickness of the board. And these come in either a five foot or a six foot length. And the Noble Foundation actually has planned specifications for bluebird box construction where you can get one box per five or six foot plank. Now this plank here is also of western red cedar. And what you see is a brand new western red cedar plank versus a plank that's one year of age. So they do start to weather uh, with time. I want to show you uh, an example of a eastern red cedar box and this particular box is about 22 years old and it's ready to be uh, repaired at this point. The good thing about standardizing your boxes I will say is that you'll be able to come in and part in those parts that degrade or wear out over time. So that's the good thing about choosing a style of box and sticking with it over time. Another construction material is um, the Eastern Red Cedar. So this box is a purchased box uh, available at many of the uh, large box stores. And these can usually be purchased for under uh, $10. And this is Eastern Red Cedar or Aromatic Cedar as opposed to Western Red Cedar. So either one of these construction materials is suitable. You can even use uh, standard pine wood as long as it's not pressure treated and actually I've been able to get 10 years out of uh, regular non-treated pine if it's not in a particularly wet environment. You'll pick up a few more years of uh, useful life if you'll do a whitewashing with a latex paint you can even dilute it at 50 percent with water but I discourage the use of roofing compounds or elastomeric compounds. I've actually had a bad experience where I sealed the box so tightly that it couldn't breathe and the box actually rotted even though I thought I was uh, doing a good job. The opening of the box is extremely important with uh, eastern bluebirds. What we're striving to get is an inch and a half opening. That's going to keep the introduced starling from being able to get into the box and use it. Starlings and house sparrows, house sparrows also known as English sparrows, are the biggest threats to the cavity nesting eastern bluebird. And so we're going to not exceed an inch and a half in diameter for the uh, hole uh, used for the opening of the bluebird box. Now what's important also is the, that the hole won't stop the common house sparrow but the hole stops not only the starling, but it also reduces the incidence of raccoon and feral domestic cats being able to get in there. But if you'd really like to put an extra whammy to keep the predators from being able to get in there, we use a predator guard where the hole's cut to the same size as in the box. And what I actually like is the hardware cloth predator guard because it somewhat discourages snakes. It's not 100% deterrent, but it keeps raccoons and also house cats from being able to articulate their arm and get in there. With the screws of the hardware cloth to the box, this actually will hold the weight of a raccoon uh, and keep them from getting in there. And it'll certainly keep a house cat from getting in there. Those are two predators that love to raid bluebird box uh, nests of uh, not only little birds, but also the eggs. And this will help deter snakes, but it's not a 100% uh, thorough deterrent. There are some other deterrents that can be put on the post uh, of the uh, boxes. Now the mounting height of boxes is very important. Uh, usually you can put them between four foot and any height that you'd like. But I encourage you to use 
a height that's convenient to you that will allow you to check the box without being uncomfortable. So mount it to a height that's comfortable to your height. For instance, uh, I'm about 5'7", and I like to place it so that I can easily look inside uh, the nest boxes. And uh, I'm able to check them on a three to four day basis. That's what the biologists recommend uh, with the checking of the boxes so you can log uh, what's going on with the boxes. And also we encourage you to participate in the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife, uh, uh, their annual bluebird survey. You can download their form uh, from the internet and we'll sh share that address with you so that you can share your data from eastern bluebird uh, nesting uh, with the Department of Wildlife. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.